Welcome back to Trucks and Junk. Today on part three of the Junkyard Golf Cart Build, we're going to be building motor mounts for this engine to be able to mount it inside that golf cart. So I already have, luckily, an old motor mount for the back from an old uh, mini bike that was a 110cc. So it's going to mount back here just fine. Now this is just square tubing with two pieces of flat stock welded to it. They're not, nothing special and it's not that bad. And so we'll have that for back here. So that saves me a lot of time, but we still need to come up with a mount for the top. And that's what we're gonna do today. Struggle for real. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't leave me much room for my big arms. Because <sighs> originally your big arm base buzzed me in there. <laughs> Okay, so this is what I have so far. I've got this mount that we had originally, just kind of loosely bolted to the engine. It's sitting right here on the frame. So for my top, what you're, what you're really gonna wanna do though, before you bolt, drill, or anything, is get your engine mocked up straight and true with this chain. Because you're gonna want the front, your, your chain on your front sprocket and your rear sprocket to be as straight as you can possibly get it before you mount anything down. Because if this, is off just by a little bit. Every time you hit a bump or whatever, it's gonna throw this chain and you're gonna have a hard time with it. So you want this to be as straight as you can get it right out the gate. And then now my plans for the top mount is I'm probably gonna bring a bar off of here and a bar off of here and then weld a bar across the top of those two bars to where I can bring the mount down or two ears down from the top bar to go through this mount. That's what we're gonna to try to do. So let's figure it out. Okay, so the metal we're gonna use is this repurposed square tubing. Uh, found this in the local salvage yard. Got it for real cheap. So we're gonna reuse it. I ground it down, got all the rust and powder coat and stuff off of it. Now we're just gonna make the measurements on the motor and the frame. Just keep in mind guys, that whenever you're gonna build these mounts, you want to mount them to the frame that we built. You don't wanna mount it to anything of the body of the, the golf cart because that motor has to move with the frame and the axle together, otherwise you'll be throwing chains all the time. So if you mount the top of that engine to the golf cart itself, it's gonna fight itself, it can't move. So we gotta mount these mounts to the frame that we built so everything moves together. That's what we're gonna do now. these together now what we need to do is drill a bigger hole on this side to where the bolt and the socket can fit through there together so that you're not squeezing the metal when you bolt this to where the bolt will be inside the square tube
gonna nail the socket for the bolt that I'm going to be using. Fit right in. And now the bolt will go to the hole in the back and this pipe won't get collapsed by the bolt. room from the big arms. Because <sighs> originally your big arms are supposed to be in there. I think with such an itty bitty motor it's taking up a whole lot of space. You guys haven't noticed I have little kids in the house too. Pretty sure y'all can hear them from time to time. I love them to death. Love all my kids to death. All right, now on these chains, I always like to put this little clip with the solid piece facing forward for when you're driving forward because that's the direction you're going the most. That way, just in case something happens to hit this, it don't pop the clip off the chain. Now, I know that's counterintuitive when we have a vehicle that goes forward and backwards, but we're not going backwards a whole lot, so. I'm still going to make this going forward. And it goes right here on the master link. This is always the hardest part to these chains. It's putting these clips on. But I also can't see because it's getting dark. And... Yep. I've got it. Yep, it's on there. Alright. So now we officially have motor mount chain and it's mounted inside this puppy. Now this chain has a lot of slack in it. So my plan for that is, is I've got a chain tensioner that I'm gonna put on it. So we don't have to worry about moving axles and everything all the time. So I got this chain tensioner right here. It's on the bearing. And what I'll do is I'll make a bracket that will probably come up off the frame here and it'll probably sit either here to be able to tighten the chain with this or down here somewhere to be able to tighten the chain but I haven't quite decided yet down here would probably be better but 
And that way, when our chain gets loose, we can just slide this up, bolt her down. This is what I'm thinking about for this chain tensioner. So I've got this sprocket like I showed you earlier. And what I did is I found a nut that sat inside the sleeve of this by which just hammered in a little bit and I drilled the center of it out. So that's a nice tight fit inside that. And then I'll have this bolt that goes through there and then this spacer, drilled it out, we'll go on the back side. And then I'm gonna put two washers on there just for spacing purposes, in case if I gotta take, take one off, put one on, because you never know exactly how far out it's gonna be on the chain. And then I've got this old metal bracket that I found in the scrap yard, like I find all this metal stuff. Don't know what they were intending to use it for, but it's pretty nice hefty duty metal bracket with a nice slit in it for this to be able to slide up and down onto the chain. So it's perfect for what I'm wanting to do. And then I'll put a spacer on the back and then a nut. And then I might weld this to like the engine mount or the frame or something like that. Just wherever it's going to be better fitted for the chain. So. But that's pretty much what I got. I think that might actually work out pretty well. Got it. I've got it mounted to the, well not mounted yet, but I've got it stuck to the engine mount there with a pair of vice grips. So I can weld that to the engine mount, which should hold up very well. And it gives me a little bit of space. If I wanted to, I could put a bolt in there as well. And then it comes right behind the chain there, right like that. And then comes into the bottom of the chain. And then like I said, I got a slit in there to where I can adjust that up or down however tight or loose I need it. So I think that's gonna work out very well. And it puts a lot of pull on that back sprocket and it's on the bottom, so it's not gonna have a whole lot of stress on it, which is awesome. So now, like I said, that should work just perfect. I'll be able to adjust that up real good and tight. Have to stay with the motor mount, which is awesome. Because once I get this all apart for my final welds, I can weld that good and solid and probably put a bolt through it. And that thing ain't gonna go nowhere. I'm pretty sure that sprocket will wear out over time, but at least it's changing. Okay guys, that's it for part three. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You're not gonna wanna miss part four, so you know what to do so you don't miss it. See you on the next one. Bye.